you know, when you're walking down the street or you're at a stoplight at a uh, the end ramp of a freeway to see that what we call homeless people are wounded by life. They carry deep wounds. But it's harder to see when somebody drives by in a top-of-the-line Porsche or somebody, you know, walks by that is impeccably dressed with, you know, their hair is absolutely perfect. And we think, oh, they are the ones. Oh, they have pruned their tree perfectly and they are exactly what I need to be. But the truth is, we're all wounded. When we showed up as our infant selves, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, most of us were at times roughly handled as we grew up. Our parents may even have loved us, although some of us really, you know, had uh, very, very, very challenging parents. But whatever kind of parent you had, they wounded you in ways they didn't even know they were. But it isn't only our parents that are the delivery system of our wounds. It is our siblings, our schools, our churches. All of these were places where our hearts were hurt. We all recognize the big wounds that children experience, like the death of a parent or mental, physical, uh, uh, sexual, verbal abuse, uh, you know, being a sick child or the heartache of living with drug addiction in your family. But we miss the everyday wounds that it, we all experience, that accumulate over time, that put an armor around our hearts. I can't tell you how many people have told me over the years that have come to explore with me Oh, I had a wonderful childhood. Well, they may have had two parents that stayed together and they may have had parents that actually loved each other. But they also experienced wounds. Some of the uh, you know, so-called ordinary wounds you could have incurred was a sibling taking your toy and taunting it, you with it, uh, the death of your beloved goldfish and you're made fun of, uh, being judged by a parent, sometimes it's just even silent, it isn't even with words, uh, the ending of your first relationship in junior high or high school, uh, the not making of the team, whether it's a sports team or the debate team, uh, not having anybody to sit with at the school lunch, being unable to zip up your jeans. Oh, my God, that's so painful. Your best friend declaring that they like somebody better than you, uh, flubbing your lines in, in, as you give a paper in, in front of your class or or in the school play, um, being compared to another sibling and coming up short, uh, and maybe it was just the final loss of your innocence that in your church you were taught that you were a sinner. We all experienced the slow drip of continual wounding. And so these may not have been the uh, wounds you experienced, uh, for they're just a tiny fraction of the wounds that we all incurred. But the more wounds you experienced, the more challenging life became. And oftentimes, as we go into adulthood, the more wounds we experience, the more even little things can make life difficult, like an unreturned telephone call or the cancellation of a meeting that meant something to you or your favorite food causes you indigestion or you didn't sleep much last night or uh, even a stoplight that's way too long. The interesting thing to note 
is that life opens and closes. It always will. It gets easy, and then it gets difficult. It gets joyous, and then it gets sorrowful. But the truth is, sometimes it really, really hurts to be alive. Because we try to get rid of the difficult and hold on to the wonderful, that's the somebody training We all accumulate a deep reservoir of pain inside of us, the place where we stash hidden despairs and painful longings. And what do most of us do with this reservoir? We try to run away from it through busyness. And when that doesn't work, uh, we to keep the pain at bay, we self-medicate with food, alcohol, drugs, screen time, and on and on and on. This is why it's so hard to stay open because we have this armory. The last time that we were fully open to the preciousness of this moment, we got hurt. We got overwhelmed. We got scared, we got teased, we got judged, we got put down. So no wonder that we have these moments and we see the precious and say, oh, yes, now, I'm living in the now, only to have the somebody training take back over again. So... How do we stay open? It's discovering how to meet our pain, how to go towards it rather than away from it. What our pain needs is the opposite of what we give to it. We resist it. We judge it. We try to get away from it. And it just follows us wherever we go. But just like when somebody, when when you're hurting and somebody judges you or tries to fix you or ignores you, you, you get tight. But when somebody comes and they listen to you, they give you accepting attention, your pain begins to calm down. Just imagine the now is is uh, oh, this brilliant, you know, jewel, and then imagine it's covered over with the clouds, and we try to keep on batting the clouds away, and we treat, try to keep on, you know, pouring water over the clouds and you know, everything to get rid of them. And when we finally learn how to sit, and we bring the light of our attention into our clouds, into our wounds. It's just like when the morning sun touches the fog. It dispels. That's the power of bringing acceptance, warmth, and care into your mind when it's on fire or your emotions when they're all over the place or your body that is in great distress. This is life changing to turn towards rather than away and to begin to treat your pain as if it were your only child. If somebody came into my life and said, you know, I'm going to give you a billion dollars and in return all I want is your capacity to meet your pain in your heart. I will take that away from you. You will no longer have it. And I wouldn't even hesitate for a moment as I told them, keep your, keep your money. Because the heart is where all true lasting healing happens. The heart is what we long for, to meet ourselves in our own hearts to discover that we are the beloved that we have been waiting for is one of the greatest gifts we can receive from life. 
So because this is not so, uh, we're not used to doing this, oh my God, you know, the exact opposite is true. It can help to first begin to practice this truth that we're all wounded by when you go out with people and you're, you know, at the mall or in the grocery store, you're driving on the freeway or you're in the elevator at work or, uh, or just in the office, you know, no matter what the people look like around you, they are all carrying a deep reservoir of pain too. Wow, this is this was just such an amazing shift for me. Why? Because I finally realized that I am not alone in my pain. There is one heart that beats in all of us and there is a common reservoir of pain that we all carry. To realize you're not alone in your pain is one of the deepest healings you can know. It allows you to not be so overwhelmed by your pain. For now, it's not just yours. It's ours. So the next time you are afraid or angry or or feeling all alone or experiencing intense physical pain or feeling like an outsider or not sure you want to even continue living? No. There are at least a million people on this planet right now that are experiencing the same thing that you are. Just let that in. At least a million people. You are not alone in your pain. And if that doesn't open your heart Know that there are hundreds of thousands of homeless children living on the streets all over the world that are right now experiencing the same difficulty, the same challenge that you are. Can this truth soften your resistance to your pain? Can it invite you more to turn towards that rather than away? Turning away from your pain is like trying to get out of quicksand. We just get more stuck. And what helped me a lot is I was really learning this, you know, uh, when I was first, I mean, you know, look at me. I mean, I don't think there's anybody that, well, no, there are other people that have turned away and resisted their pain as much, maybe even more than I did. But gaining 97 pounds in a year and washing it all down with alcohol and taking every drug I could get my hands on, and then when all that didn't work, trying to kill myself three times, that's a hell of a lot of resistance to pain. And yet, turning towards was where freedom came. And yes, there were times when it was so scary to turn towards. But then I would say to myself, but can I meet this pain inside of me for all the homeless children in the world? And that cut through my resistance. And slowly and surely I found my heart opening to all my pain and to the pain of others. You know, even, um, I can remember a time when When I was with Stephen Levine, you know, my main mentor in a room with 600 people, and he was talking about open your heart to others who are in pain, and he brought up Hitler. And you could feel the whole room, you know, just react and contract. But he took us back into his, all the way into his childhood. Some people could now open to him as a child. Some people could only open to him as an infant. Some people could not open to him at all. But he said something that touched me so deeply. He said, who needs our hearts more than people that are acting out in such destructive ways? We want to hate them. We want to vilify them, mostly because they remind us of our own wounds. You know, it, it 